the number of drinks that we're all consuming that are also acidic. Right. So, we, you know, I kind of was looking at this research and left thinking, gosh, I'm bathing my, my teeth in, <laughs> in acid. You're in an acid bath. A, throughout the day. Right. Quite, a, quite often because I drink kombucha. Actually, let me go through the list. Yeah. So apple cider vinegar is is a pH level of between 2.5 and 3, which means it's it's very acidic. Right. Remember, so water is kind of a 7, which would be considered neutral. Mm -hmm. Anything above 7 is alkaline. Mm -hmm. And stomach acid's 1 point something. Yes, very acidic. Right. right. So where do you think soda lands? As in sugars? sugars? Regular and diet soda. So Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Diet Coke, sugar-free Red Bull. Okay, based on what I know about carbonated water, I looked into this because I was drinking way too much. I got a, um, what do you call it, like a soda stream and I was just kind of addicted to sparkling water. I read about sparkling water, it is slightly acidic compared to water. So I would say it is similar or even more acidic than that, which was I think pH of 5.5. So Coca-Cola, Pepsi and Diet Coke are all between 2.5 and 3.3. <laughs> Red Bull, 3.2. Oh my. Monster Energy, 2.7 to 3.1. Gatorade, 3.2. Mountain Dew, 3.1. Apple cider vinegar, 2.5 to 3, wow. as we've mentioned. Lemon juice, if you just have pure undiluted, 2 to 2.6. More acidic than apple cider vinegar. Jeez. Lemon water, if you put a tablespoon into 250 mils, changes that because it makes it more alkaline. You're diluting it to uh, 3 to 4, so still acidic. Jeez. So even if you were having lemon water yeah you would want to rinse your mouth out with a, wow. a glass of water after that or use a straw now here's the thing that got me kombucha because i typically have a kombucha or two every day yeah that's 2.5 to 3.5 depending on whether it's unflavored or flavored wow olipop prebiotic soda and poppy prebiotic soda right so prebiotic sodas have gone nuts yeah. particularly in the u.s i'm I think I don't yeah. spend as much time in Australia anymore, but uh, people I, drinking I, I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm not if they're not life. here, there yeah. will be prebiotic sodas everywhere. So right. 3.5 to 4. Wow. Um, so we've got energy drinks, you know, at uh, around 3. These prebiotic sodas, which are kind of promoted as a healthy alternative to water, mm. 3.5 to 4. Yeah, wow. And then coffee, 4.5 to 5. So still acidic, not as bad as some of those other ones I've listed, but definitely acidic and can still stain teeth and cause some damage to enamel from what I found online, but it's, it's, it's much more mild. And then tea, you know, 5 to 5.5, so mildly acidic, less damaging than, than sodas mm -hmm. and apple cider vinegar. And then you, you get up to water. But you can imagine if you start your day with lemon juice, you have an apple cider vinegar, <laughs> you then have one or two kombuchas for gut health, and you drink coffee, you can imagine – you know, by midday, yeah, <laughs> what you've been doing to your enamel. That's a great point. You're, you're in an acid bath. Yeah, I don't mean to, yeah, he, to kind of raise the alarm and scare people too much, but I just think that when we're assessing these beverages, and I fall into this trap a lot of time, we look at the label and you look at what's the sugar content. Or you look at gut health promoting. Yeah, or, yeah. You're not necessarily thinking about the pH. Mm -hmm. Mate, there's, a, there's dentists listening right now that are just cheering for you like they've been saying this for years well this was a blind you know, spot honestly as i looked is. in the apple cider vinegar research and one of my questions was adverse effects started double clicking on this i was mm -hmm. like wow no one's speaking about this right Th that is such a good point this actually reminds me of just this idea that you know every expert in their domain thinks that the most important thing for your health is their domain right mm -hmm. so like the gut health gastroenterologist will say it's all about the gut the, you know, the neuroscientist, it's all about the brain and mm -hmm. the dentist has been saying it's all about the mouth. And when they hear something like this, they're thinking, well, you are actually exposing your teeth to an acid bath. Well, like, as you say, wake up, coffee, lemon in your water, apple cider before every meal, a couple of kombuchas, maybe another coffee later in the day, apple cider before bed. What are we doing to our mouth? You know, and, uh, you know, some dentists will say all disease starts in the mouth. Other people say all disease starts in the gut. 
But I think that this is just a reminder to have a balanced look at, at the human mm. body. I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, APOB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of function members have an APOB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.